Hello, Libertarian here. You know, history books are full of examples of failed communist states. But believe it or not, there are some successful communist states too. But there's a twist. The communist states that succeed do so by embracing capitalism and abandoning communism, at least when it comes to their economies. Today I'm going to tell you about a little country called Vietnam. You've probably heard of it. Uh, they are currently ruled and have been for quite some time by a communist party, a one-party state. But despite that, they have become a somewhat unexpected capitalist success story. Let's start in 1973, when Vietnam was divided between the Communist North and the Capitalist South. The U.S. military had been waging a rather unjust war against North Vietnam since the 60s, and by 1973, they finally decided to throw in the towel and evacuate the country. So basically, the North Vietnamese uh, forces won the war, defeated America and proceeded to take over the country. This photo right here is the famous image of people trying to get on a United States helicopter as it flees the South Vietnam uh, uh, US Embassy. North Vietnam's military conquered the South and in 1975 reunified the country under the North's communist government. The Vietnamese government immediately began implementing a policy of socialist command economics across the country. They collectivized the farms. They made the state the owner of all the land. They fixed prices. They banned most markets. For example, the farms were all collectivized. They had to sell all their output to the state at a fixed price and meet production quotas. The government implemented an ambitious five-year plan with big growth in production targets. But at the end of that five-year plan, they discovered that they missed those targets and they missed them pretty badly. They got nowhere near hitting their production and growth goals. So by 1980, it was clear that uh, they weren't producing enough goods or, or food for the populace. They tried to accelerate collectivization and continue with their socialized economic planning in the early 80s, but it didn't really improve anything. And the people uh, were starting to get, you know, unhappy. By the mid 80s, they were faced with the possibility of outright famine. So in 1986, the Vietnamese government decided to change course. They implemented a new plan that translates to renovation innovation. They also referred to it as a socialist oriented market economy. Um, you'll see in my video history, I refer to social uh, market socialism as diet capitalism, and that's more or less what they were trying to uh, what they were trying to do here. What the plan aimed to do was to liberalize the economy, undo the collectivization, they scale back the central planning, and they implemented market reforms and property rights, basically to to implement a capitalist economic framework under the guise and guidance of the Communist Party is what they decided to do in the mid 80s. They used the communist talk, but they walked the capitalist walk. Now, the socialist oriented market economy reforms by and large worked. By the late 80s, things were getting notably better in the economy and prosperity was increasing. So in 1991, the government decided to expand and accelerate the pro-market and pro-property rights reforms. They wanted more of a good thing. Uh, why not, right? I don't blame them for that. They encouraged decentralization of industries, they sought foreign investment, and they implemented, in their own words, a mixed economy. The results were tremendous. Through the 90s, economic growth soared, poverty declined, and food consumption and goods consumption increased. Skyscrapers started popping up left and right. The cities got modernized. Cars were driving down the roads like a lot of cars. Everyone started owning cars. You know, all the typical signs of wealth, accumulation, and prosperity for everybody. Foreign firms started opening up in the country and brought with them investment dollars that created jobs and opportunity for the people. Vietnam's GDP grew almost five times during the, the 90s. It grew from 6.5 billion in 1990 to 31 billion in the year 2000. In just a span of 10 years, five times the, the, the GDP growth. Probably the biggest success story in the Vietnamese economic transformation was the agricultural industry. 
You see, Vietnam has environmental conditions that make it very favorable for rice production, but the collectivization of the farms in the 70s and early 80s denied them the ability to capitalize on those conditions, and their rice production remained inadequate to feed the people. But the privatization of the farms in the 90s was so successful that they made enough rice not only to feed the whole country, but also to export a lot of extra rice on the international market. So today, Vietnam is the largest exporter of rice in the world, and their rice is high quality. Everyone loves it, everyone buys it, everyone eats it. This was only made possible thanks to market liberalization and property rights reforms that allowed the productive potential of their farms to be unleashed. Today, the USA is one of Vietnam's largest export markets. The war with the USA has been pushed aside in the, in the Vietnamese history books to make room for a new chapter of peace, trade, and mutual prosperity. You know what they say, if you're not building bridges, you're building bombs. And I'm really, really glad to see that bridges have been built between the United States and Vietnam. The effects of these reforms have been profound on the psyche of the Vietnamese people. In fact, the Vietnamese people have become quite fond of capitalism, even more so than Americans are. Look at this headline. It turns out communist Vietnam loves capitalism more than the U.S. does. The lesson here is that true communism is impossible. It is unsustainable. It doesn't work. It turns out that the only way to be a successful communist country is, ironically, to embrace capitalism, at least in your economy. You have to embrace free markets, embrace foreign trade, and embrace property rights. Some commies claim that capitalism is merely a transition stage to communism, but Vietnam did the opposite. Their communist policies were the first thing they tried, and they didn't work. It, it ended up that the communism was a transition stage to capitalism. So Vietnam started by building communism in the 70s and ended up with the capitalism by the 90s. And Vietnam is only going further down the privatization road today. Their capitalism is intensifying. Their foreign trade is intensifying. The private businesses are making up an ever greater share of the economy and their socialism is withering. If a self-declared communist government find self-preservation and economic success for the country it runs through capitalism and mixed economic policies, then I consider that a win for capitalism and a lose for communism. Thanks for watching.